Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. I, I want to say I have very mixed feelings about this markup today. K-12 education is a passion of mine. It's been for a long time. It's fact, in fact, the reason why I ran for office and one of the main reasons I'm here, truly a key to rebuilding our economy, sustaining and improving the quality of life in our communities, and, and the functioning in, of our government and our democracy. And I'm excited to finally be discussing the ESEA reauthorization during my first term serving on this committee, but I must say that I'm quite disappointed in the process that's led to today's markup. I don't need to tell anyone in this room how much we need a reauthorization. Students, teachers, and parents continue to feel the detrimental effects of No Child Left Behind and are looking for updates and improvements. They're dealing with over-testing, a disproportionate focus on tested subjects at the expense of a well-rounded education, and severe funding cuts while at the same time dealing with poverty, hunger, and homelessness among their students. The goals of No Child Left Behind are worth preserving. We should not be ignoring any of our children in our public school system. And too many are still falling through the cracks. But we need long-term thinking to improve our public education system. I came to Congress just a year and a half ago with a mission of working in a bipartisan way to help deliver solutions to our public schools. And unfortunately, this process looks and feels partisan, and I'm concerned that this approach will result in a bill that will not become law, and we will be back where we started. H.R. 5 makes significant changes in the ESEA, and some I actually support. I'm glad to see changes in the AYP, and as a frequent critic of punitive labeling, I'm pleased that the bill eliminates labeling of schools based on student test scores. The one-size-fits-all approach has not worked. I'm glad that family engagement is recognized as important, and I appreciate flexibility in concept. But Mr. Chairman, I do not see this bill overall as one that will further educational opportunities for all students across this country. In fact, block granting would make equity less likely and instead make it more likely that students will get opportunities depending on where they live or who their parents are. Block granting funding will simply result in fewer students having access to quality education. I'm also extremely concerned about what appears to be woefully inadequate funding, especially for Title I and Title II, and removing maintenance of effort provisions will result in diminished state funding. Cutting the McKinney-Vento funding for homeless students when we have seen an increase in the number of students without a home is unacceptable. I appreciate the commitment that all of my colleagues on this committee have to providing the best education possible for students in our public schools across this great country. But H.R. 5 is not the way to accomplish that important goal. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I yield back. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I want to thank uh, Ranking Member Miller for the substitute amendment, which I'll be supporting. Uh, this amendment begins to put our federal education policy back on track by making long overdue improvements to the ESEA. This amendment starts the movement toward more meaningful assessments away from more high stakes testing. It allows states and school districts to use multiple measures in assessment and to use adaptive, computer adaptive testing, which my state has found very successful. The school performance will be measured in multiple ways using multiple subjects and indicators. That's positive, and I also appreciate the language in the substitute aimed at improving teacher evaluations and the attention given uh, to giving teachers and school leaders the support they need to succeed. Additionally, one of the most exciting provisions in, in this amendment is the recognition of the value of STEM education and the integration of arts and design, adding the A to make STEAM. We all agree that STEM education is critical to the success of our country, our economy, and our workforce. Enhancing STEM through the arts and design will help engage more students, and because they'll be using both halves of their brain, help them develop into creative, innovative, critical thinkers. These are uh, skills that our employers are looking for. In fact, I've never heard an employer say they're looking for good test takers. I'm proud that this substitute amendment includes integrated arts and design instruction in its definition of STEM subjects. And in addition, this bill explicitly allows grants under the new STEM education program to be used for STEAM programs that integrate the arts and design into STEM teaching. This approach holds a great deal of promise for uh, our future and for uh, innovation. It's also important that the substitute bill recognizes the benefits of a well-rounded whole child approach to education. To reach their potential, students must be healthy, safe, engaged, supported, and challenged at school. Subjects like civics, physical education, second languages, the programs like service learning, which my colleague Mr. Lobsack mentioned, all lead to the development of well-rounded students who become productive and innovative adults. 
Well-rounded education also gives them a greater diversity of skills, increases engagement, and helps to keep kids in school. Likewise, the Substitute Amendment has specific funding for literacy programs, which are key to student success. It also maintains the 21st Century Community Learning Centers funding for uh, extended learning opportunities. Uh, very successful programs, especially in low-income areas. The Substitute Amendment will also help keep our students safer. It addresses the practice of seclusion and restraint by limiting such practices except in cases of emergency or physical danger, requires background checks for staff and contractors with access to children, and sets standards for concussion safety. Finally, the Substitute authorizes funding for homeless students at a meaningful and important level. Ranking Member Miller, thank you for your leadership on this alternative proposal that supports the vast diversity of our students and our school districts around the country. I urge my colleagues to join me in supporting legislation that best supports our students and our schools. I hope we can work together and come up with legislation that will actually be enacted in both chambers and signed by the President. Uh, I see that in this substitute amendment, and I, I hope we can uh, continue to work forward. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I yield back the back.